Hi and welcome to Electric Car Australia. My name is Greg and today's video is going to feature electric vehicle pole chargers. Now we recently used one of these when we went on our trip from Brisbane to Sydney and back. We stopped in at Newcastle and we used the EVX pole charger at Newcastle. So today we're going to show you guys the charger, we're going to show you how to find these particular chargers, also what they cost and what it was like the first time I'd used one of these charging up our MG ZS EV. So these particular electric vehicle chargers are perfect for owners who don't have off-street parking for their EV. So if you're parking them overnight in the street you can charge up and also for drivers who are parked at a particular location for a few hours. Now they've been in the media recently because the New South Wales government has announced some additional funding for 500 of these to be installed in conjunction with local councils and EV infrastructure providers. And the particular one we're going to look at at Newcastle today was recently featured in a article by The Driven. So if you haven't seen The Driven, it's a fantastic EV website, been around for a number of years. I'll put a link in the show notes, so please check that story out. And these particular chargers are what you call a level two charger. So they're an AC charger. And this particular one is a 22 kilowatt charger and it has two outlets. So you can have two EVs charged at the same time up to 22 kilowatts. Now there is a cost to use this charger and we'll talk about that in the video but a question I often get asked are electric vehicles cheaper to run than petrol or diesel so i.e is the electricity cheaper to purchase for the distance you travel than petrol or diesel? The short answer is it is. Now the comparison between highway driving and city driving or around town driving needs to be taken into consideration because an electric vehicle will use more energy on a highway road trip so your consumption will be higher. So in our MG ZS EV we use about 18 to 19 kilowatt hours of energy per 100 kilometers traveled on the highway or the motorway. So if I was charging at this charger, that would be about $9 worth of energy or electricity I would use to travel 100 kilometers on the highway. If compared to around town or city driving, that same 100 kilometers would only cost me about $7.50 because I don't use as much energy driving around town because of regenerative braking. We use about 15 kilowatt hours per 100k. So even though we're traveling 100 kilometers, the cost is less, around $7.50 at one of these charges, and that's because we don't use as much energy to travel that same distance. So we'll get into the video now. Uh, I do apologize for the sound. The sound on the day was a little bit hit and miss, but it does get better throughout the video. And on that note, a lot of the gear we use is quite expensive. So if you'd like to help us, a free easy way to do that is click that subscribe button if you haven't. Also leave a comment. The algorithms love comments. So the more comments that you put in, that helps the channel with views. And I also like reading the comments and responding to those. So please do that. If you'd like to know a little bit more about how you could support us by flicking us a couple of dollars, please stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll talk about how you could provide a one-off donation or a monthly subscription. And also some great, I think it's great, exciting news of some changes coming up at the channel. So stay tuned through to the end of the video and we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, let's have a look at this EVX pole charger in Newcastle. Well, today we're in a beautiful spot. This is Merriweather Beach down in Newcastle and we're at Dixon Park and I've found a rather unique lamp post or power pole as they call it here in Australia. Um, there's not too many of these around. I believe there's another one in Glebe in Sydney. Um, but this one's on our way back on our travels to Brisbane. We've been down a fully charged live in Sydney. So I thought I'll whip in today and show you guys just what's so neat about this power pole. So let's check it out. So there it is with the beautiful beach in the background. We've got an EVX charger. Now, as I mentioned, there was another one of these just recently installed in Glebe. You can see it's coming in on the normal power pole there. Got the cables running down. And look at this bit of gear. 
it's called an EVX pole charger so if I can find some specs online I'll put those on the site there now you do need to download an app which is a bit frustrating I've got about eight apps for this trip um, but anyway you can download that you also might be able to just start it without that um, sorry you do need to download the app but I don't think you need to register I think you can just scan it to charge so as it says there scan the QR code to download the app plug in your charge cable which we've got there's our type 2 so we'll plug that in shortly so you do need to bring that yourself to start and end charge use the app or the RFID so I don't have an RFID so we'll use the app Blue's charging, yellow's reserved, and green shows it available. And there's a support number. Um, so you'd swipe the RFID there. As I said, we don't have. This is where your Type 2 plugs in. So we'll plug that in shortly. And I think it is 22 kilowatt, this one. I'll put a screenshot of the app. And there's the EVXE brand in there. But look, it's a nice spot. It's at Dixon Park, as I mentioned, so the kids have jumped out of the car and they've run down to the beach. There is a kids' playground there. There's a uh, dog, dog park as well. There's heaps of parking. There's a little coffee shop here. And there's the surf club. Now, there was no waiting at this, um, this charger, and the reason for that is there's a 50 cent a kilowatt charge here, which is, that's okay. Um, I'm all good with that, um, but there is some free type 2 chargers around so um, obviously everybody would be going to those before they would come to this one So the first gen MG ZS we've got our push and lift um, Charge port on it. So we lift that up. We pull out our type 2 bung um, We leave the CCS one in we don't need that out We come over we grab our lead now I generally always plug the car in first and that's the larger plug so there we go that's the large end type 2 goes into the car nice and tight and these plugs you should always keep these nice and clean because they'll um, they'll allow stuff to go into your terminals and wear them out so I usually plug that in and just sit it like that Here's your mail end, so this is the smaller end. We'll uncoil that cable. Again, has a rubber plug on the end to keep the terminals nice and clean. So we pop that off. There's your mail. So what we'll do is we'll lift the flap here. Not the easiest one-handed. You can see there, that just plugs straight in there. There's a rubber seal in there for moisture control started to flash so I'll grab the app out and we'll see if we can get this baby going so you guys probably can't see that very well but that's the app the apps open uh, locations on so we're going to click that click that okay it tells us we're at Dixon Park pole charger and it says scan there we don't need to scan because we've already got it on okay so we've clicked that we've got the EVXE charger Dixon Park it says scan the barcode so let's go over and scan the barcode um, we'll allow it to take photos there we go it tells us it's 11 kilowatts yeah, minimum price is 50 cents, so 5 cents a kilowatt. So there we go, it's a flat rate, so no matter what time of the day or night you come, it's 50 cents a kilowatt. Minimum cost is 50 cents per session, so let's get it charging. Press that start charging. Please plug your vehicle in, and there we go. So if you guys can see that, we are charging on the Dixon Park pole charger. And that's going to register how much um, power we're getting, how much energy we've put into the car, the durations we've been charging, and the dollar amount. So it gives you all that information in your app. And there's the blue LED, so we're charging.
Here we are inside the car with the trusty EV Watchdog app and we're putting in 6.4 kilowatt hours. So there we go, this is a um, only a 7 kilowatt capable EV, the MG ZS, so 7 kilowatts is the most um, charge we can get no matter what sized AC charger we plug into and that's telling us it'll take us five hours and 46 minutes to fully charge we've got 62 kilometers of range left in the battery and it's at 26 percent now we don't need too much because we're heading off up the coast further on our road trip back to brisbane so we only need um, about an hour's charge here to get to the next rapid charger and while we're in the EV Watchdog app, I'll just show you a couple of other stats as well. So on the left-hand side charge there, it's showing that we've got 11.5 kilowatt hours of energy in the battery. You've just seen it jump up then. And we've got 25.9%. So you'll see the main battery there is at 390 volts. We'll just flick it back over. See this auxiliary here? So what that is, that's your 12-volt battery that runs all your headlights and music and all that sort of stuff. While you're charging, that always charges that battery up. So every time you plug into a charger to charge your main traction battery, that will be um, charging that 12-volt battery. So this EV Watchdog app is a really handy bit of girl, cool Um App you can check out, I'll include a video link to that above where I went through that, but this is a separate app, it's free, you can download it from your Apple or Android store, and it's a really handy app to have. So we're just about to unplug and hit the road, so I'll show you the stats shortly, but a couple of things I should have mentioned. How do you find these charges? Well, the best one probably is um, the actual company's app themselves, but as I mentioned, they've only got a couple in New South Wales so far. So another option is PlugShare. So we always use PlugShare when we stop to charge. It's a community-based um, charging app, so it'll show you where every charging or charger is around the world. And it's, as I mentioned, community-based, but it's always a really good idea to um, log yourself in to tell people that you're here and how long you'll be. So when we pulled up, we logged in and said we'd be here for approximately one hour. And what that does, that helps other drivers if they're looking for a charger and everybody's logged in, um, they can see whether the charge is free or not, and if it's not free, uh, approximate time when it will become free. Another thing to keep in mind, whenever you're using these types of chargers, uh, as I mentioned, you need to bring your own lead. So you need to purchase this type two to type two lead yourself. Um, they're around between three and $500, depending on which type you get in the length. But as you can see, that goes across from the power pole. So just be mindful that if you're in a public space, um, try and minimize the trip hazards. So what I've done there is I've tucked it in Closish to the pole there, runs along the ground as direct as possible, and then there's probably a meter's length that I've just tucked under the car out of the way, um, and again, push this one in as close as possible to the car. And I should have mentioned too, this one has two sockets, so you've got a socket on either side. So there we go, there's another one. So we can have two EVs charging at once. So we're just about to disconnect, so to show you guys the app there, now that's great information, it says the power is 6.78, sorry, 6.728 kilowatts. So that's how much we're actually putting into the car. So that's the speed, I guess, of the power going in. The total energy that has been put into the battery is 6.07 kilowatts. Just ticked over to 6.18. We've been charging for 57 minutes and it's cost us a total of $3.09. And one final thing to mention too, you might be wondering, um, well, if I pull up at a 7 or an 11 kilowatt charger, how much range can I get out of an hour of charging? Well, as I mentioned, this is an 11 kilowatt charger. We can only use 7 kilowatts, that's limited by our car. And you generally don't get the full 7 kilowatts. So as you'll see there, we got about 6.5, 6.8 kilowatts. Now if we charge for one hour around town driving, that would give us about, uh, say, 50 kilometres of range. 
If we're out the motorway, 110 fully loaded like we have been on this road trip, that'll give us about 35 to 40 kilometres of range. So obviously, the more the car's consuming, the less range, but that gives you a bit of an idea if you charge for one hour at a seven kilowatt charger, you'll get between 35 and 50 kilometres of range added to the car for every hour you travel. Well, that's it for another video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And you might be wondering why I haven't had many videos out recently. Well, the last couple of months are the busiest time of the year in my full-time job. So that has kept me very busy. So unfortunately, I haven't been behind the lens or in front of the lens, haven't been producing videos. So I'm slowly working through some of the backlog that I had. Um, we've still got some coming from our trip to Fully Charge, which was back in March. We've got some from the Brisbane Truck Show. But one of the new things I'm looking to introduce to, I guess, spice the channel up a little bit, is have a campfire chat type session. So lots of channels um, often create a second channel to do that. Look, I'll be honest, I don't have time um, to do that. So what I intend to do is have every second or third video or episode that I release a bit of a fireside chat. So what the intention there is to take some of your comments and questions over various videos and basically have a bit of a discussion or chat about those. Now, some viewers won't like that. And if that's the case, you can just skip those videos. I'll make it really clear that they are a fireside chat type uh, video and, and more a sort of Q&A type thing. At this point, they won't be live. Again, um, I just don't have the capacity and the time at the moment to organize live stream type events. So these will be just um, a sort of pre-recorded one, I guess. But if it's not really your thing, you can skip them. Um, but what it does, it helps again that algorithms and, and just tries to keep the views up on the channel. Yes, so those algorithms are really important in helping support the channel. So even though I don't do it for money, I obviously have a full-time job, it does take up a bit of time. The gear is quite expensive. The camera we're using now is about $1,600. The microphone setup's about $300, so it all adds up. So those algorithms are important to help with the advertising. So I just had a look at the, some of the stats for last month, and this will give an indication of the um, money that you make from the um, advertising and the views. So we had about 56,000 minutes of my videos watched last month. So that equates to about 932 hours. And from that, I get around eight and a half cents for every one hour of my videos that are viewed. So it's not much and it'll I'll probably never pay off the cost of the gear and stuff. But as I mentioned, I get a kick out of helping you guys, showing you some different things that you may not normally see, and also educating the community from an independent owner's perspective of a cheaper version electric vehicle. So it's not the uh, high flying whiz bang long range ones and provide a bit of practical advice. So yeah, if you can, please support via that um, subscription, giving us a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you can, I would really appreciate a couple of dollars via a one-off donation or a monthly subscription. And I'll put the uh, links in the show notes and also down below the platforms that you can use for that. So having said that, that's it for another video. Thanks very much for watching. I'm looking forward to bringing you guys um, more content and mixing it up a, a little bit. And in closing, I just wanted to mention the Renew magazine has a great program going at the moment. It's called Get Off Gas. So particularly for those uh, living down in the southern states, so down in Victoria, etc., over the next uh, few weeks or a couple of months, I think it is, there's a lot of free webinars that you can join up via the Renew website and book those. Um, so as my regular viewers will know, I'm a member of the Alternative Technology Association, which uh, publishes Renew. So I'll put a link in the show notes. So if your house is on gas and you're looking to get off gas for environmental health concerns and also obviously back pocket cost concerns, please click that link in the show notes and have a look at that. And um, I'd really encourage you to also join Renew. Um, become a member. They do a lot of advocacy for sustainability, insulation, efficiency standards, uh, and 
just general environmental stuff. So uh, magazine comes out every couple of months and it's a really, really good read. So please check that out. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, look after your friends and family and stay safe. Cheers.